Hello, this is a virtual microscopy slide of a case of squamous cell carcinoma of the larynx. And we are looking at a longitudinal section through the middle of the larynx. This is anterior, this is posterior, this is superior and inferior. Superiorly, we have the epiglottis, which is covered here on its posterior surface by non-keratinizing stratified squamous epithelium. And we can see here the cartilage of the epiglottis. And as we move down, usually the more inferior aspects of the epiglottis is actually covered by respiratory type epithelium, which means that we should see columnar ciliated cells. However, in smokers, as we see in this instance, it is often just replaced completely by stratified squamous epithelium. And here are some of the minor salivary glands, pretty much all throughout the epiglottis and also moving into the larynx. So we are moving downwards and this is the region of the vocal cords. Here would be roughly where the false vocal cord would be and the ventricle and then the starting of the true vocal cord. So we have this whole area that is involved by tumour and therefore this tumour stretches from the supraglottic region and into the true vocal cord. Let's look more closely at the tumour and we can see that there is a mass in this region which has areas of hemorrhage and ulceration. Here we have some fibrin due to mucosal ulceration and this can be also causing some bleeding and therefore the patient may have hemoptysis or the coughing of blood. At the same time, of course, because the vocal cord tissue is destroyed, there will definitely be hoarseness of voice. So looking at this abnormal area, and this is in the supraglottic region, we can see that the tumour is composed of these irregular nests of malignant cells infiltrating into the stroma. And these cells are polygonal in shape. They have nuclei which appear to be moderately pleomorphic. These cells have very dense eosinophilic cytoplasm. We can also see some small keratin pearls forming here. Moving to this more solid area, we can see that in some areas the nuclei are quite large with very prominent nucleoli. And again here, we can see a nucleus with a prominent nucleolus. Let's move further downwards and this is coming towards the true vocal cord region. I just want to draw your attention to this area where the cells really appear quite pleomorphic. The nuclei are very large, irregular and hyperchromatic. In some areas, the nuclei are very elongated. So this particular area is markedly pleomorphic. So we have a range of differentiation here. In the better differentiated areas, we can still recognize this squamous appearance with keratin pearls. And over here, we can also see very well-formed keratin pearls. However, in other areas, such as here, we can see that there is more pronounced nuclear pleomorphism. And in these areas, the tumor would be considered poorly differentiated. So one of the important factors in staging of the tumour is whether this tumour involves one or more than one site in the larynx. And in this instance, it involves both the true vocal cord. We are not able to see the subglottic structures here, but it involves the true as well as the false vocal cord and supraglottic region. So it already involves two regions in the larynx. And another feature is to assess whether the tumour invades into the thyroid cartilage. In this instance, it is not invading into the cartilage proper, although it is very close. So we would have to take sections here and sample this area to see if the tumour is truly invading into the thyroid cartilage. 
Here I have placed side by side this very important document, which is from the College of American Pathologists, or the CAP protocol for examination of specimens with cancers of the larynx. So pathologists often refer to this template or this protocol to assess these tumors both grossly and microscopically. And here we can see a diagram of the laryngeal structures pretty much in the same view or same plane as we see on histology. So this is the epiglottis as we see here and this is the thyroid cartilage as we see here just starting to come up and we can see that the tumor in our case is involving supraglottic and the glottic region. So here the false vocal cord or the supraglottic structures and the true vocal cord or the glottis. And here is the AJCC TNM system that we use for staging laryngeal squamous cell carcinoma. In this instance, we have tumor that is involving the glottis, but also extending to the supraglottis. So this is at least a PT2 tumor. And you can see here that if the tumor invades through the thyroid cartilage, then it is a higher local stage. So this is how the pathologist would generally evaluate the tumor in terms of the grade of the squamous cell carcinoma, in this case, poorly differentiated, and also the location of the tumor, whether it is involving one or more sites of the larynx, and the local extent of spread, for example, whether it's going into the thyroid cartilage or adjacent structures, Hence, in summary, this is a case of squamous cell carcinoma of the larynx involving both the supraglottis and the glottis. And this tumor is composed of infiltrative nests of malignant squamous cells with areas of keratin pearl formation and with some more poorly differentiated or high-grade areas with marked nuclear pleomorphism. Therefore, this is a poorly differentiated squamous cell carcinoma of the larynx. And to complement this virtual microscopy slide, you can also see this virtual pathology specimen of an example of squamous cell carcinoma of the larynx. And you can see here the epiglottis and here is the tumor, which is very cauliflower-like in appearance. And this is taken from our free online pathology resource, PathWeb. You can register for free and the link is in the video description. If you scroll down, you'll see lots of other information, including annotated gross microscopy pictures, as well as a video explaining the gross features. Thank you.